Um, as we start off, you know, we know that there are a lot of misconceptions about hospice services. We're, we're kind of doing hospice 101 um, to, to go over the basics um, of what you need to know about it. So we'll give a little disclaimer out here. There are lots of different hospice agencies um, with a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Um, we all follow the same Medicare guidelines for providing hospice services to patients and families. Um, but we can follow them in a couple of different ways. Um, and we have like different areas of focus um, depending on the agency. So that's kind of the difference um, that you'll see. We're, we're coming from the perspective of Heartland. Mm -hmm. Neither of us have worked for any other hospice agency. So we're coming from that perspective. Um, you may have had experience with a different agency or you may work with a different agency in the future. Um, but we're going to try and go over just kind of the basics across the board. And then we'll also talk about, you know, Heartland specifics, what makes us mm -hmm. different or unique or kind of the perspective that we're coming from. So starting off, um, just a brief overview of kind of what, what we're gonna be going over, the, those hospice basics, providing services, the care team, the levels of care, and then Heartland specifics, we'll do a little true or false game. And then, then we'll be able to talk to you about our palliative program mm -hmm. as well. Um, so what is hospice? Um, a lot of people um, kind of have the, the idea that hospice is end of life care, but very, very end of life mm -hmm. care, like last week or weeks or days um, of, of life for patients. Um, but it's actually so much more than that. Um, so the, the actual definition of hospice, the Medicare definition is care for an individual with a prognosis of six months or less. Should the patient run its normal course as certified by a physician? Of course, you know, no physician can be 100% certain um, about a timeline um, for a disease progression. Um, but, you know, based on kind of the best knowledge that we have, if a patient's condition should run its normal course, it could be reasonably expected that they would pass away it within six months. Um, the hospice services for Medicare patients are 100% covered under the Medicare benefit um, so that uses the patient's Part A benefits. Um, and many other insurers pay for hospice at 100% as well. Um, Medicaid um, and then any third-party insurance um, usually has pretty good benefits mm -hmm. for hospice coverage. Um, typically, we see a majority of Medicare um, patients. Um, and that is 100% coverage for, for any of the services provided across the board. And that includes just a time enrollment. Yeah, absolutely. Like any DME equipment that the patient may need, medications that are related to that admitting diagnosis um, under the hospice benefits, and the visits that we provide are covered. So, I mean, literally all of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot that you can get from that benefit. Anything that has to do with the reason that you're on service mm -hmm. for, for hospice is, is covered, including supplies, medication, yeah. and equipment. And incontinence, yeah, yeah, medical supplies, incontinence supplies, all of that's covered. Yeah. So that's kind of like the technical definition from Medicare and what all agencies go on. Heartland's definition, when we're going out and we're working with patients and families, really what it boils down to is we're providing pain management, symptom management, and support at home for patients and families. Um, it's, of course, you know, there is uh, the hospice philosophy. Um, that we work on. So hospice philosophy is focused on comfort and quality of life. It's not aggressive or curative treatment, which is where, you know, some of the misconceptions come in about it being scary. We're going to stop all medications. We're going to do this. That's not necessarily true. We're just focused. Our focus is on comfort and quality of life. And our care is centered on the patient and the family. So we understand that the patient, you know, wherever they call home, their environment is also so important mm -hmm. to their comfort and quality of life. Um, so Heartland's philosophy is to meet patients and families where they are physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, you know, oftentimes people, when they, when they get a diagnosis or, um, you know, they're reaching the end of, of what they're able to pursue as far as aggressive treatments, um, give up hope or, you know, kind of feel like it's, it's over. Um, but what we wanted them to know is that we're going to meet you where you are. So if there are any treatments or anything that you're still interested in, um, everything's a conversation with Heartland. There are some treatments that, um, you know, other agencies may consider aggressive or curative, um, um, but we're really looking at what is this 
quality of life mm -hmm. and how can we help you to achieve those goals. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about kind of how we deliver that to patients and that's through our care team. Um, so in the graphic, you can see that that patient is the center of care. Um, and then our team is a nurse um, and they are kind of the case manager um, for the team. So they help with medications, ordering supplies, taking vitals, symptom management. They're the ones who are checking in regularly um, with the patient and kind of coordinating the rest of the team, doing the communication with our medical director or any other doctors involved. Um, then we also have PNAs. We also call them home health aides. Um, and they uh, assist with any personal care needs um, that a patient may have. So bathing, dressing, grooming, you know, they're able to come in and provide that care. We have social workers who uh, work with us and our patients and families. Their role is really being kind of the resource person, um, linking that patient and family to um, needed community resources, answering questions about maybe insurance or um, burial preferences or uh, power of attorney paperwork, things like that. Um, and then our spiritual care coordinator um, is also a member of the core team. Um, so they're really there to kind of have the deeper conversations with patients and families. They're able to speak to a variety of faith backgrounds. And really what they wanna know and figure out is what's most important to you? What traditions, what values are most important to you? And how can we make sure that our team members are honoring that? Um, so that's the core team. Those four people are the core team. We also have additional therapies and support that we can provide to patients and families, such as music therapy and massage therapy. Um, those are two things that we offer um, for comfort and quality of life. Um, and our music therapists and massage therapists are specially trained to work with hospice patients mm -hmm. um, to address uh, pain um, and, and comfort issues. Um, then we also have um, volunteer services that we can offer as additional support. So um, say a patient is being cared for by their family members at home and that family member needs to go to the grocery store for an hour or two, you know, needs to go run errands. We do have uh, volunteers that are trained to come in and provide friendly uh, visitations with patients. They can sit with patients while their loved one goes grocery shopping. Um, so those can be offered to patients. We even have physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy available. Normally, those things aren't usually associated. You know, they, they're maybe considered aggressive, trying to meet, you know, certain goals for patients. But, you know, if a patient is wanting to um, maintain some range of motion um, for comfort, you know, for turning themselves um, mm -hmm. in the bed or something like that, uh, those are things that our physical therapists can provide with them more safety focused and comfort focused. Yeah, I was gonna say more safety. And if a patient were to get maybe like a wheelchair or a walker that's new to them, then they can kind of help facilitate just to make sure that they are transferring safe to and from that or you know, just make sure that they're safe in their environment. Exactly. Exactly. Those things are really important no matter what stage of the journey that you're on. Um, and then another team member who we haven't really listed here um, is our bereavement team. That's offered to every family. Um, so after a loved one, you know, our patient passes on our services, our families are eligible for 13 months of um, following from our bereavement team. They send out newsletters, they have support groups, they have one-on-one -on -one counseling available um, to kind of help patients and families through that grieving process and to set them up um, for uh, support um, and healing on that. So that's the care team. That's how we kind of deliver these, these services. Um, and then another common question that families have um, is about the levels of care. Where are these services provided? So the most common level of care, the majority of our patients are on routine home care. Um, so that is wherever a patient calls home, that's where we deliver those services. Um, it's very important to us that our patients wherever they're most comfortable, um, you know, whether that's a facility, mm -hmm. an independent living apartment, um, their residential home, a hotel, we, we go to wherever the patient mm -hmm. is um, because we, we want to keep them in their most comfortable environment. And sometimes patients and families request respite. So um, Medicare does pay for a short-term stay at a qualified facility. 
Um, and that's to provide relief for caregiver burnout um, or the kind of um, to help with temporary housing needs. So if somebody is, um, you know, needing um, to do renovations on their home to make it more accessible for them, we can provide this um, respite. Um, Medicare pays for five consecutive days, including transportation to and from the facility. And our team members continue to see the patient as they're in that respite care home. So nothing stops for them, it's just a change in location. And they also help facilitate that, you know, they schedule the transportation, they talk to the facility. And so it's not just kind of throwing on the families, but we really help facilitate all of that for the families. Yeah. Um, the next level of care is called intensive care. So that's temporary round the clock care provided by our clinical staff member um, during a time of crisis. Um, so examples of that may be if a patient's having uncontrolled pain, uncontrolled symptoms, or extreme agitation. This intervention is used to try and keep the patient in their home even throughout that time of crisis until the patient is stable again or until the situation is stable again. Um, but we can provide that, that continuous care. Um, and then we also have a DIP program, so that's permanent vacation. And this is utilized when a patient's symptoms or pain cannot be controlled in the home environment. Um, and they need a place where they're able to access more medical resources than what we're able to provide in the home. We provide a lot <laughs> in the yeah. home, um, but there are some things that, you know, we just need right away. Um, and that would be a reason to admit them to our inpatient. Heartland, in particular, does not have, we don't have our own inpatient facility, um, but we contract with different qualified facilities and hospitals um, in the area. So, you know, you're still under our care. Mm -hmm. You're still seen by our staff um, and our, our doctors are still overseeing your care, um, but you're just in a location where you have additional resources that can, that can help with um, symptom or pain management. Um, so that's a, that's a little bit of the basics of kind of 101, which you'll probably find in most agencies across the board. Um, and then I'll hand it back over to Carrie to go over some specifics for Heartland. Yeah, and we'll do a little bit of true or false. I mean, I know we had talked about doing um, debunking like hospice myths, so we'll put a few myths up and then we can kind of talk about them or you know, kind of just go into detail a little bit more about what makes Heartland a little bit different and then also just general hospice um, in the community. So the first myth that we hear a lot is that you have to stop all treatments when coming onto hospice. Um, I know Molly kind of touched base on this a little bit before, but that is false. Um, so Medicare may cover comforting treatments such as palliative radiation, um, chemotherapy, blood transfusions, or any other kind of treatments. Um, but as long as that patient is still meeting that criteria, then we're able to recertify them or keep them eligible on our services. I um, mean, like Myla said before, it's always a conversation. You know, we aren't here to provide curative treatments. We want to make sure our patients are comfortable. Um, so if that's getting one last, you know, chemo treatment and then talking to the family and stopping that, you know, that's something we're open to discussing and, you know, helping our patients meet those goals that they um, wish for. Um, another myth that we often hear is if I am on hospice, I can still go to the hospital if I need to. Um, this would be true. Um, uh, one of our goals is to prevent hospital stays um, or decrease them as much as possible. You know, the patient still has rights and we want that patient to do what they feel is best for them. Um, so we always encourage families to call us first because we like Mala said, so we can do a lot in home. We can do IVs in home, IV antibiotics in home, fluids, things like that. Um, so we always want to make sure they call us first. Um, but we do understand, you know, that comfort of calling 911 first happens. Um, so we just ask that they call us afterwards, um, and then we have nurses that will meet them in the hospital. We follow them while they're in their hospital, um, but really, you know, who wants to go to the hospital? So our goal is to keep them at home, try to manage their symptoms at home. We have a 24-hour triage line that um, patients and families can call at any time with questions, you know, changing condition. We can send a nurse out, anything like that. Uh, the next one is, if I'm on hospice, I can continue to see my primary care doctor. Um, so this one is also true. Um, we do have our own medical director, but we also understand patients have developed these relationships with their doctor throughout the years. Um, so as long as that physician is okay and open to following them on their hospice services, then we're okay with it as well. Um, and if not, then we can always, you know, default back to our medical director who's also available and 
we know we always just have that conversation with the family to see which one that they prefer. The next one, um, if I live in assisted living, I must move to receive hospice services. Um, so I know we gently just touched base on this, but of course that one's false. Um, we meet the patients wherever they call home. Um, so we do partner with a lot of assisted livings in the area, independent living, skilled nursing. Um, and we always like to say hospice isn't a place. You don't have to be anywhere specific to get hospice, but it's more, you know, more so that philosophy of care that we follow to provide comfort to every patient. The next one, um, which we hear very often, is I can be a full code and still be on hospice. Um, and the answer to this is true. Um, a lot of families think that you have to have all of that legal documentation in place um, or a DNR in place or the most form in place, things like that. But Medicare does not require patients to have a DNR to be on hospice services. Um, Heartland recognizes that patients are still processing a lot of things. You know, some of this might be new to them. They might just not know what to do. Um, so our staff does a really great job of providing education, you know, having that plan of care, you know, call or meeting with them um, and just really kind of educating them on, you know, maybe the benefits of having those in place, why you may not want to have those in place, but to be on hospice, you don't have to have a DNR. And uh, the next one is hospice means that I'm giving up hope. Um, we get this one a lot um, where families aren't ready, they feel like we're giving up on them or they feel like they're giving up on themselves. Um, so this one is a huge false. Um, Heartland actually believes that hospice is hope. You know, we're here to provide the best quality of life for patients without the concern of quantity of time. We want families and friends to remember those memories with their loved ones, you know, give them the best days, you know, during their last few months or weeks or however long they have left. We want them to remember all those good things and not worry about how long that they do have. Um, we actually have patients that discharge off of hospice or graduate is what we can call it. Um, where they actually get better. We help patients almost meet their goals sometimes and, you know, they are able to discharge off of services and then we get them back on, you know, if they do have another decline. Um, but we always just want to remember that, you know, it's about the quality, not quantity um, with Heartland. Um, and so those are a few myths. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Or we'll leave time at the end, but if there's anything kind of sticking out right now, we can go over them. No? Okay, right. well, we'll keep moving along. Um, we also have a palliative care program, um, and I'll let Mala go over this briefly, but we have hospice, and then we actually um, just started our own palliative care program out of our office as well. Um, so super excited to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just like Terry mentioned in the final myth that I really you know, one thing that's really important to Heartland um, is that our, our goal is to support the community and just understanding and understanding and finding the best fit for a patient and their ability. So whether that's something that we're able to provide to a patient and family, something that maybe our palliative care uh, program is more appropriate to provide, or, you know, just um, education. If, if mm -hmm. families and or community members just have questions about you know, you aren't quite ready to start that yet, but you want to know more. Um, that's what we're here for. And that's really Heartland's goal is just to make sure that um, families and patients are educated um, in their decision making when it comes to all of their options. So part of finding a good fit for a patient is identifying that appropriate level of care for their needs. So it may be that our palliative care program um, provides them with the pain management and pain control um, and support at home that they're looking for. Um, so first of all, we'll start out with what is palliative care? Um, palliative services address specific issues with an advanced disease or serious illness that results from the treatment or change in condition. So this can be delivered to any patient at any stage of a serious or advanced illness. And it can be provided in conjunction with aggressive or curative treatments. Patients continue to see all of their current providers. So, um, you know, if you have a patient, let's say, who has a cancer diagnosis, and they're receiving chemo treatments, and they're experiencing some pain or symptoms from those chemo treatments, palliative care um, can come in and address those symptoms that they're experiencing, um, that they're experiencing out in the home outside of their doctor's office when they're, you know, getting the treatment, they can still continue to see their oncologist, their cardiologist, their primary care doctor, 
um, everybody is so involved and really a palliative care team works to, to coordinate the care among all the providers and collaborate with all of the providers. So kind of what's the difference of palliative versus hospice? All hospice care is palliative in nature, meaning that palliative just means comfort, right? So all hospice care is palliative in nature, but palliative care is covered, uh, is covered differently. Or I'm sorry, not all palliative care is covered under the Medicare benefit, it's covered differently um, than hospice. So palliative services are covered under insurance policies, much like you would see a normal doctor's office being covered. Um, families, unfortunately, don't receive the visits from the uh, aid, social worker, or spiritual care um, coordinator, so not the whole team is involved. Um, uh, palliative services are, yeah, covered under that Medicare Part B benefit, so you still have maybe that 20% still pay. Um, but whatever patients see for a normal doctor's office visit, yes, can come to the team. Um, palliative services are provided by a nurse practitioner who visits the patient in their own home. They offer um, patient and family education on treatment goals, techniques to control pain, and complex decision making. So that's one of the benefits of having our nurse practitioner come in and have these discussions. Is again, if you have a patient who's not quite ready to take that step into, into hospice care yet, um, that nurse practitioner can come in and you know answer questions about it and kind of see that that link mm -hmm. um, to comfort and quality of life goals. Um, these visits are consultative, so they're always going to work in collaboration with first providers, as I mentioned before. Um, and one real benefit, I think, of our palliative care program is that, you know, the, that nurse practitioner is coming to the patient's home. So a lot of times um, we see patients who go in and they, you know, in, in that office setting, mm -hmm. they report one thing to the doctor and they say, this is how it's going to the doctor, but then at home, you know, the, the questions, the medications, the advice, the nutrition, you know, advice that the doctor is giving them, is that realistic? Um, bringing that home. And so this nurse practitioner is able to see that home environment still um, and make, you know, appropriate decisions saying, hey, that's, you know, it wouldn't be safe to have this equipment in the home. It's not realistic to ask them to do this thing. How can we coordinate this care for them to be comfortable where they are? So our palliative care branch is called ProMedica Palliative. Um, Heartland is a division of ProMedica, which is the largest not-for-profit healthcare provider in the U.S. Um, we work very closely with our pro medica palliative care team and we're able to facilitate that transition to and from palliative services. So that's part of what I do specifically is I work with our palliative care team to make sure, hey, could this patient be eligible for more services through hospice care? How can we make that, you know, happen? Do they have questions? Can I answer them? Um, how can we make sure they're getting what they need? Um, we wanted to mention that specifically because we know that that ProMedica logo and symbol, it sounds different than Heartland. It looks different than Heartland. It is the same, we're the same mm -hmm. organization. Um, but we wanted to clear that up. So there's an example of the ProMedica <laughs> symbol. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about palliative care as well. Um, but again, you know, just kind of to, to end on that thought of really our goal is to, to get patients what they need, mm -hmm. whether that's us whether that's palliative care, whether that's something entirely different. You know, we want to answer questions. We want to be a resource for patients and families. Um, so, yeah. Does anyone have any questions or anything or thing that they may have learned new or just kind of something you can take away from it? Mm -hmm.